Cathedral Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi. We are gathered here today on the third Sunday of the Easter season to celebrate as one body of Christ, as one community of faith. Bienvenidos a la Catedral Basílica de San Francisco de Asís. Hoy ce celebramos el tercero domingo en tiempo uh, de Pascua. Estamos reunidos aquí para celebrar que somos un cuerpo de Cristo, una comunidad de fe. Nuestro celebrante para esta Santa Misa, our celebrant for our sacred liturgy today, is our beloved Archbishop John Wester, Archbishop of Santa Fe. Welcome to all of you, our faithful parishioners, as always, who are in prayer today, and also uh, to all of our visitors who are visiting today. How many of you are from out of town? How wonderful to have you with us. Welcome, everyone. We also want to welcome in a special way our friends that may be uh, at home today or in another state that are joining us in prayer via our live stream as well. Everything that you need today, as always, is in our worship aid. And so I invite you to join in all of the sung prayer today. Our mass intentions are for Robert McDermott, for the deceased family members of the Lorenza uh, Lorenzo Silva Jr. family, and for Diana Valdez on her 10th anniversary, and for you, the people of the parish. We have a couple of announcements on behalf of our parish. On Saturday, April the 20th at 10 a.m., the docent ministry will be providing our parishioners with a tour of the Cathedral Basilica lasting 45 to 60 minutes. Many of you come to Mass each week and may not know some of the nuanced historical significance or uh, other details about our beautiful house of worship that is uh, a cornerstone of the Southwest. And so we invite you to come and take advantage uh, and be with our docents as they give us a uh, history of that. The docent ministry would like to extend this special invitation to our new members of our uh, church as well as uh, our existing members to show the art, history, and spirituality of uh, our Cathedral Basilica. So we invite you to come. There are no reservations necessary. Just gather near the desk of the front entry of the church uh, at 10 a.m. And again, that is this coming Saturday, April the 20th. From our marriage office today, we will be welcoming seven couples who are considering uh, being married here at our Cathedral Basilica, and uh, so we ask you to keep them in your prayers during this time of discernment. Um, from St. Michael's High School, St. Michael's High School would like to invite you to a complimentary pancake breakfast at the school today from 10 to 1 to celebrate the feast of, of uh, St. John Baptiste de La Salle. And so that today is at St. Michael's High School, so we invite you to do that. And uh, one last reminder, please check your cell phones to make sure that they are silenced so as to maintain our sanctuary of prayer as we gather today. As you know, during the Easter season, we are blessed with the Easter water that reminds us of our baptism and our call to continual conversion. I invite you now to stand and greet one another. Now let us face our baptismal font, and together we sing our opening hymn. <clears throat>
En el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Mis hermanos y hermanas, la paz de Jesucristo esté siempre con ustedes. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, all my fellow hay fever sufferers. Welcome, all those who may be visiting here to Santa Fe. And uh, we certainly are just filled with joy and great uh, excitement as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. It is throughout this entire Easter season that we hear how the disciples encountered the risen Christ at different times and in different ways, all the while trying to understand the meaning of the resurrection, just as we do. We, too, contemplate the implications of the resurrection and consider how we see the risen Lord in our lives. It helps us to gather as church, where we can seek the presence of Christ as we worship, in the assembly, in its ministers, in the Word of God, and in the Holy Sacrifice, and in the Eucharist. Let us pray, then, that we may better discern the Lord in our midst. And so it is with Easter joy that we are one in the newly baptized, remembering our own immersion into Christ's saving death and resurrection, as we are now blessed with this water, with which we give praise and thanks for the gift of water and for the gift of our baptisms.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. 
you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life put you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Juan. Hijitos míos, les escribo esto para que no pequen. Pero si alguien peca, tenemos como intercesor ante el Padre a Jesucristo el justo. Porque Él se ofreció como víctima de expiación por nuestros pecados. Y no solo por los nuestros, sino por los del mundo entero. En esto tenemos una prueba de que conocemos a Dios en que cumplimos sus mandamientos. Él que dice, 
yo lo conozco, pero no cumple sus mandamientos, es un mentiroso y la verdad no está con él. Pero en aquel que cumple su palabra, el amor de Dios ha llegado a su plenitud y precisamente en esto conocemos que estamos unidos a él. Palabra de Dios. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way, and Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a, a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because the ghost does not have flesh and bones. As you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. For well, they were still incredulously for, uh, incredulous for joy and were amazed. He asked them, have you anything here to eat? He gave them, uh, they gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus.
I notice from time to time that certain churches on billboards have the homily of the Sunday, uh, they give it a title. And I thought, well, I never give my homilies a title, so I thought I'd give my homily today a title. It's called Get Real, Get Faith. The reason I bring that up is that I think sometimes, maybe I'm wrong, but I think sometimes there might be a subtle implication that our faith, our religion, is kind of something for Sunday morning, and then we go back into our real lives. It's kind of the, 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 the spiritual world and then the real world. When in fact, the two are quite united. In fact, faith and religion exist at the core of reality, ultimate reality. Remember when we were in the seminary, we'd work during the summer in those days, and I had a job at a restaurant, and there were a bunch of us friends who would work together, and one of our friends did not work. He, didn't, he couldn't get a summer job. But very laudably, he went to uh, pursue faith and religion and prayer service. He'd borrow our cars and use our gas and, and go to these faraway place. And he'd come back and he'd say, wasn't it wonderful how God provided for me? I got to the prayer service. I said, God, it was our money you were spending, our gas and our car. Now, ultimately, obviously, it's God. Yes, of course, but we were a little bit resentful of that. But again, I think that there was a bit of a, a lack of reality for him at that point in his young life. That religion, it, there's, there's a reality to it. And we see this throughout Scripture. It's, uh, scripture tells us that religion and faith is grounded in reality, not in make-believe. Just because it's a belief or because it's grounded in faith doesn't mean that it's not real. Belief is not fantasy just because it can't be proven. Such thinking, I think, is reflective of a certain arrogance for us creatures to rely more on creation than on the Creator. Easter is not a case of witnessing a ghost, but the real Jesus, crucified in weakness, risen in glory. The evangelist today wants us to reflect on this reality. He makes it very clear that belief, faith is part of our lives. We sometimes don't recognize it, but it certainly is. Every time you get on a plane, you're exercising faith in those two pilots and the fact that this technology works and that air is really there even though it's invisible. When you uh, come to a stoplight and yours is green, you have faith that the people will stop at the red light. That faith gets tested here in New Mexico from time to time. But uh, when you take a pill, you have faith that that medicine is going to do what it's supposed to do, etc., etc. So we really live by faith in the real world quite a bit without even recognizing it. And so today, St. Luke is very clear that uh, Jesus is real. He asks for fish, something to eat. It's interesting how the disciples were fed by Jesus in, when he was walking this earth, and after the resurrection, it is the disciples who feed Jesus. Last Sunday, Thomas was invited to put his fingers into the wounds of Christ. This is a real Christ, truly risen from the dead. Now, you might say, and I've had the same thought, that it was a lot easier for those early disciples who witnessed the risen Christ to believe in him. After all, they saw him in real time. They have, <clears throat> they have an advantage over us. But do they really? Notice that Mary Magdalene and the disciples on the way to Emmaus do not recognize Jesus. Even though they see him in the flesh, risen from the dead, they don't recognize him at first. It's only when they come to faith that they really see the risen Christ, that they can really embrace the risen Christ. Edward Skillebex, the famous Dominican theologian, said that one only sees the risen Jesus when one has faith in the risen Jesus. And so this real faith is what allowed Mary and the first disciples to believe in Jesus. The appearances was, were one thing, but then they had to come to believe in him and to commit themselves to him and to be in relationship with him. Just knowing that he exists is only the first step. It's only through faith that we embrace the resurrection. As I often say, that famous quote from the National Geographic reporter, some people say, I'll believe it when I see it. I say, I see it because I believe it.
But what about that fact that they did have a benefit? In a sense, I guess you could say that there was an advantage to actually see the Christ, but we can do the same. You and I can still perceive and witness and see the risen Christ in our day-to-day lives. It's just a different kind of manifestation. God is love. We know that from the scriptures. St. John is clear. God is love. And so we see the risen Christ all the time in our loving relationships. That is why Jesus insisted on forgiveness in Luke's gospel today, because it is in forgiveness and in love and in mercy that we see the risen Christ at work. As famous uh, as a theologian, Teresa Sanders, he said, only when, she said, only when we see Jesus in the wayfarer, the hungry, the thirsty, the imprisoned, the sick, can we say that we have seen the resurrection. She went on to say that resurrection is not a fantasy in our minds, but a reality. That is what religion is all about, witnessing the risen Jesus in others. Jesus wants us to be his eyes and his ears and his hands as we serve him and give witness to his resurrection and as we forgive one another and seek forgiveness. This is not a fantasy religion, but a real religion. Jesus ascends to the Father, and he commissions you and me to give witness to his resurrection, to see his resurrection day in and day out, and to give witness to it. The resurrection is there in the good night kiss you give to your loved one, and in the embrace that you share with a friend after years of giving each other the silent treatment. The resurrection is there in those blue eyes of a little baby just baptized who smiles broadly for her baptismal picture. And the resurrection is present in the old man who prays the Our Father with his family as he prepares to breathe his last. The resurrection is there in the sunrise coming over the Sangre de Cristo mountains. And also the resurrection is there in the New Mexicans who come to the aid of their neighbors who lost their homes in the 2022 Hermit's Peak and Calf Canyon fire. The resurrection is there in the alcoholic who goes back to AA after falling off the wagon and in the drug addict who celebrates 10 years of being clean. The resurrection is there in the students who get accepted into the college of their choice and the resurrection is there in the graduates who finally pay off their student debt. In other words, Christ's resurrection is found in the countless expressions of love, in relationships renewed and celebrated, in those who have found a reason for hoping again. It's found in nature and in art, in music, and in every human being who reflects the beauty of the Creator in whose image we are all made. We must find Christ risen in our lives and in the lives of others, believe in Him, and see him because we believe, and like those first disciples, through faith, we've come to believe that indeed he's risen from the dead. I love the poem from Gerard Manley Hopkins, The Grandeur of God, which I think speaks to this reality of Christ's resurrection in everyday things. He said, the world is charged with the grandeur of God. It will flame out like shining from shook foil. It gathers to a greatness like the ooze of oil crushed. Why do men then now not wreck his rod? Generations have trod, have trod, have trod. And all is seared with trade, bleared, smeared with toil. And wears man's smudge and shares man's smell. The soil is bare now, nor can foot feel being shod. And for all this, nature is never spent. There lives the dearest freshness deep down things. And though the last lights off the black west went, oh, morning at the brown brink eastward springs, because the Holy Ghost over the bent world broods with warm breast and with ah, bright wings. Perhaps I should change the title of the homily, not get real, get faith, but get faith and then get real. Yes, nature is never spent because the Holy Ghost over the bent world broods, and because the resurrection is real.
And now together we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Jesus did not want his disciples to remain troubled, so he assured them of his continuing presence through the resurrection. And so now let us bring our knees before the Lord, assured of God's presence and our neediness. For the church, that we may be witnesses to the risen Lord, revealing his presence in our acts of mercy and love, and bringing his healing touch to those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are in authority, that they may pursue justice, right the wrongs that persist and lift up those who are oppressed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace given by the risen Lord to the disciples may continue to spread and flourish all over the world especially for those in places of war. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are welcomed into the church during the Easter, season, Easter vigil, and for all those who will be making their first communion during this Easter season, that they may know Christ in a special way during this time of joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill, imprisoned, homeless, or neglected, that they and those who care for them may, be, may recognize the Lord in each other, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, For those prayers, spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, your Son reveals himself in the gifts that we bring, the sacrifice that we celebrate, and the Eucharist that we receive. Help us to see him in one another, to build up the kingdom here on earth. We ask this through Christ, our risen Lord. I give 
Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of all the Church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis, St. Clair, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May that same peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, be with you always. And Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Will the church please stand and join in singing, Behold the Lamb.
I now invite the Minister of Holy Communion, who will be taking communion to the homebound, to please come forward. My dear friend, you are about to bring communion from this Eucharistic assembly to our sisters and brothers who are unable to be here with us. Give them our greeting and our love. Pray with them, read today's gospel with them, and minister to them this most precious sacrament through Christ our Lord. Thank you. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. We are filled with gratitude to our Lord, the risen Lord, for this opportunity to pray together. We especially thank uh, all those who have been assisting at our ministry, our liturgy, ministering at the Eucharist today, to Gabriel, to our acolytes, Deacon Juan, to our music ministers who always serve us so capably and beautifully. We're very grateful. And Carmen, who I understand that you and the St. Michael's Choir won the uh, top place in your category for the choirs in all of New Mexico. So congratulations. <laughs> We're very proud of you, and we're glad to share you with others. That's wonderful. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. One final announcement. He's going to kill me, but it's okay. Tuesday is Gabriel's birthday, and so we want to wish him oh. a blessed, beautiful birthday on Tuesday. <laughs> to be 18 again, right? For one dollar, I'll tell you how old he is. Oh, for 10 cents. <laughs> 